dodge this. One world currency. The new world order. Those are the roots of trouble. I imagine that right now you're feeling a bit like Alice. Tumbling down the rabbit hole? Hmm? Let me tell you why you're here. You're here because you know something. What you know you can't explain. But you feel it. You felt it your entire life. That there's something wrong with the world. You don't know what it is. But it's there. Like a splinter in your mind. Try to keep mad. It is this feeling that has brought you to me. This is your last chance. After this, there is no turning around. You take the blue pill. The story ends. You wake up in your bed and believe whatever you want. You take the red pill. You stay in Wonderland. And I show you how deep the rabbit hole goes. All I'm offering is the truth. Nothing more. But we are opposed around the world by a monolithic and ruthless conspiracy that relies primarily on covet means for expanding its sphere of influence, on infiltration instead of invasion, on subversion instead of election, on intimidation instead of free choice, on guerrillas by night instead of armies by day. It is a system which has conscripted vast human and material resources into the building of a tightly knit, highly efficient machine that combines military, diplomatic, intelligence, economic, scientific, and political operations. Its preparations are concealed, not published. Its mistakes are buried, not headlined. Its dissenters are silenced, not praised. No expenditure is questioned, no rumor is printed, no secret is revealed. But I am asking your help in the tremendous task of informing and alerting the American people. And now, welcome to another episode of Down the Rabbit Hole. Here's your host from FederalJack.com. It's Popeye. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another live edition of DTRH. It is the first edition of DTRH of 2015. It is January 1st, actually, 2015. Wow, 2014 went by pretty fast, huh? Pretty crappy for me, as most of you know. Newer listeners might not. For some of you that might just be tuning in in the past like month or a few weeks and you hear me say cryptic things like that and nothing else after it, it is because unfortunately my beautiful wife, Merce, my best friend of nine years, my wife of five, uh, passed away in October of 2014 very unexpectedly. And uh, 2014 has definitely sucked. It's been very rough. Uh, past two and a half months have been uh, a roller coaster ride. But I have to take a moment to say thank you to a special someone who, especially in the past month, has made the the uh, the rough sleepless nights much easier. And she's actually also the inspiration for my show today because of a conversation we had. Um, I guess you could say yesterday or early today because <laughs> I don't sleep at night much anymore. So uh, thank you, Jamie. Uh, if it were not for you, dear, the past few weeks would have been completely unbearable. Uh, you are a very good friend uh, to stay up late chatting with me and uh, letting me just sit and spew. So thank you. I wanted to give her a big shout out. I told her I'd say thank you on air so in front of bazillions of people. So there you are. Uh, but it was a conversation I had with her yesterday or early this morning, whatever it was, that inspired today's broadcast. I I wanted to go over this stuff, right? And I was but I wasn't sure when I was gonna do it. You know? And I woke up and I was like, you know what? Today's a perfect day to get into that subject because I had we had the conversation, I fell asleep, and my brain must have been mulling it over in my sleep. And our brains do that. They you know, they're operating twenty four seven. They compute things, they analyze things while we sleep. It's like the old expression, sleep on a problem. So when I woke up this morning, I was like, hmm, or I should say this afternoon, when I woke up, because <laughs> I didn't go to bed until about 10 a.m. this morning. Yes, my schedule is all sorts of screwed up. I'm a, I'm a, uh, a night owl. I won't say vampires because, well, we all know 
vampires are weenie-ish. But um, so I woke up and I was just inspired. I got out of bed and I was like, this is what I need to talk about tonight. So what am I going to talk about tonight? Something I talk about pretty constantly. But I think it's really important for me to go over, especially with everything that's going on right now. In this time period that we're in and the beginning of the new year, what better way to start it but with some truth, some hardcore honest truth and solutions instead of just coming on and scaring you and pointing out the problems. I'm going to offer you solutions because there are solutions. It looks scary. It looks dark. But you're the light that's going to shine through that darkness. You just need to be inspired to do so. So, what am I talking about? Racism as a control method. The divide that we're in. Revolution. And the answer to it all. People think that this problem is more profound well, it's not that easy. You can't fix it that easy. Why not? Because humanity's just stupid. Blah, blah, blah. It's ingrained in them. You realize that by saying things like that, by coming off with that attitude right off the bat, you're making it worse. You're the one that's programming it and making it almost institutionalized in society that, you know, they ha- that, that they're dumb and that they're worthless and that they're not, not you know, this peaceful evolution of mankind will never happen and that we'll always be down where we are. Always. It's not true. Absolutely not true. It's, it's like, it's almost like making an excuse for behavior you don't want to fix. And for parents, you tell your kids not to do something, they do it, you know, maybe they, 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 they get in trouble, and you try, to, you try to talk to them, and your kid comes up with a bazillion excuses as to why they do something, or your spouse, or whatever. They won't actually try to fix the problem, because they either don't want to, or they're in their own little comfort zone. But they'll fight like hell to defend this illogical position. So I wanted to throw that reminder out there to everybody about that before we get into this because this is a contentious issue racism well papa you're a white guy you don't know nothing about racial discrimination like hell i don't i lived in miami for six and a half years don't tell me i don't know about anything about racial discrimination trust me if mercy were alive right now i'd call her into the office and i'd have her put on a headset and tell you exactly what i went through down when we lived in Miami. If I went into a place with her, it was fine. I was treated okay. If I went in some place by myself that was like all predominantly Spanish speaking, I was treated like a quote unquote dirty gringo. Looked down on. They would talk about me. I understand a little bit of Spanish though. So. But if I walked in there with my wife, it was different. I was cool because I was married to a Latina. So it's not just white people. There's racism in all races. See, racism is the belief that one race is better than any other race. Is it's superior to all the other races. Okay. And by the way, the fact that we even use that term races, like one race is better than other races, think about that. We're all just one race. We're the human race. Right? Some of us are black, some of us are white, some of us are Latino, some of us are Asian, whatever, you know, whatever else, different denomination, whatever you want to do. You could break it down any which way you want. We're still all human. We still all operate the same way. Whether you're black, Latino, Asian, white, you get shot, you die. You have a heart attack, you die. You don't have oxygen, you die. It's pretty simple. Yet the people at the very tippy top, and this is not something that's happened in the past 20 years or 30 years or 40 years. This goes back thousands of years. They've used race and where we come from, they being the powers that shouldn't be, going all the way back to, if you believe the Sumerian stories, the the bloodlines that were given the power by the Anunnaki when they took off. They use that as a method of control. 
It's very simple and very basic. Over the years, they've learned how to spin it. They have their little spin doctors that put their twist on things, and they get you to get bogged down in the semantics. So you don't really pay attention to the very basic, simple thing that's going on. It's called divide and conquer. And we will forever be at the level of base consciousness that we're at, and we will forever be in this cycle, this revolution, because that's all a revolution is, by the way, ladies and gentlemen, is a cycle. Ask a mechanic or an engineer what a revolution is. It's part of a cycle. Look at a car engine. The crankshaft goes around four times for each one full cycle, complete cycle of the engine. You know, intake, power, exhaust, everything, you know, combustion. Well, I said that in the wrong order, but you know what I mean. There's a cycle. And each time for the piston to like for the piston to come down and do the intake, the crankshaft has to turn. It reaches, you know, however, the, it, it, you'd have to look, Google an engine, a car engine crankshaft, and you'll see they're not very straight. You'll see how it's set up, and you get an idea of what I mean. So as the piston comes down on intake, that's one revolution. As it goes back up for, uh, like in the case of a diesel compression and ignition, um, or in the case of uh, a regular, uh, you know, gasoline-powered engine ignition, as it goes up, the crankshaft is spinning. That's one revolution, another revolution of the crankshaft. The crankshaft has to revolve a third time for the piston to come back down during uh, combustion as the explosion pushes it back down. And it spins again when the piston goes back up for exhaust. So that's four full revolutions for one cycle. You starting to understand it now? And the reason I break it down in very simple, easy to understand terms is so people can see what's going on. If you can understand at a very base level, ladies and gentlemen, these games will not be played on you because they will have no power. They will not work. It's that simple. So a revolution, which is what they want, is a very bad idea. Now, why would they want a revolution? Because they want people to, they want people to stand up in the streets, burn stuff down. They want Ferguson. They want that in a worldwide, or at least a countrywide scale right now. They'd love it to have it on a worldwide scale. Remember, out of chaos, order. But they want it on a countrywide scale. Why is that? Because that's the only outcome they can control. Why do you think they have prison camps? Why do you think they have MRAPs? Why do you think they militarize the police and they train the police that the public is bad? Why do you think they have uh, uh, active duty military actually you know, here in the country specifically for insurrections now? Specifically for civil disturbance. Like they have to go out and maybe round people up. You can go look it up. Why do they have that? Because they are afraid. They are afraid of you and your true potential. It's that simple. That is the answer. The answer is you. I say it all the time at the end of the show. The solution to our problems are an inside job. And I always tell people, what do I say? Go be the superheroes. I know you all are inside. It's because the solutions, ladies and gentlemen, literally are inside you. You're the answer. They fear that because they know that once you realize your true potential, you're going to not need them anymore. And if you don't need them in any way, shape, or form, politically, financially, whatever, they lose their power because that's how they identify themselves. They identify with being, quote-unquote, our lords. It's not the way it is. And once you understand your true potential... They go away. That's the answer. A lot of people have said, well, Popeye, I doubt they'll go away peacefully. Oh, I doubt it. But if everybody else sees what's up and says, you know what? I want to evolve. I don't want to be part of this. I don't want to be used. Why do I want to bear the karmic debt and kill another human being for no reason just because you said so and you want to give me $5? You know what? I don't need you. The world can be a better place and my child can grow up in a better place. Because I'm willing to do the right thing. Then what are they going to do? Kill them! If there's no cops or soldiers willing to kill people, who's going to do it? You think David Rockefeller or Dick Cheney? Well, Dick Cheney might because he's evil. But he's easy. You just walk up to him with a little EMP device and turn him off. Good night, Dick. You and your bad ticker. 
send you right back to that pit of darkness where your soulless body came from, scumbag. You haven't really liked Dick Cheney. But you think Bush, the rest of them, are all going to p- pick up a, a gun and attack you? You think any of these politicians, you think our current president, you think the vice president, Joe, Joe Biden can't find his way to the bathroom, okay? But even though he's a bumbling moron, you've got to be careful. He is a sneaky snake scumbag. Don't ever underestimate Joe Biden. A lot of people blow him off. Oh, he's, he's an idiot. Right. You know, sometimes they play that idiot real well. I mean, he is a, he's not the, the smartest guy. Sometimes he comes out and says the stupid stuff. But don't underestimate him. He's still a gangster. But again, do you think they're going to pick up a gun and run out and run at like 90% of the population of the country? And be like, get on your knees. I'm your master. Do you not know who I am? No. <laughs> no. That's not going to happen. They need their thugs to do it. Why do you think they need to turn us against each other? Why do you think they need people to hate each other? Why do you think they need people to like literally want to tear each other apart? Seriously. They need us to hate each other. Because if we realize that we're all on the same team, it's over for them. So they need us to be distracted. They need us to be distracted over political things like oh you're a democrat i'm a republican i'm a libertarian well i'm an independent i'm a whatever how about you're just a human how about we erase all that crap and just start back off at the basics you're a human hi i'm a human you're a human my name is popeye you're whoever nice to meet you how can we help one another Oh, I have some information. I have some knowledge. Oh, well, I have some food or I have some shelter. Oh, let's get together and let's collaborate. Oh, look, problem solved. Can we go explore space in the oceans yet? No? We still want to fight with each other? Okay, I guess I still have to do this. Ladies and gentlemen, it's not that hard. Well, you know, there's politics, Popeye. You know what? Again, all of that, all those semantical arguments stem from base level thinking. If we moved up to the next level... We wouldn't have this problem anymore. You're not getting it. Once you evolve and you go to the next plateau, this stuff doesn't matter anymore. It's like when my wife died, when Merce passed. I said this on air plenty of times, and I've told plenty of people that are married off air. I, I, I give the advice freely, okay? If you if you're not happy in your relationship, that's one thing. If things are bad or pro, there's problems, that's one thing. But if if in your relationship, the only thing you do is you have arguments over menial little like, oh, you left the toilet seat up and everything else is pretty cool, okay? And even if there's eh, you know, other stupid arguments, when that, if one of those two passes, you don't really care about that other stuff. You realize that that stuff doesn't matter. It's not important, right? It, you realize that was, that was a lower level of thinking and now because you're on a different perspective. Trust me, losing the spouse – Get you real philosophical real quick. You can ask Chris Gio, Sheree, Joe Joseph, Ange, Kev Baker, the Woo crew. You can ask any of them. Like we have some serious conversations off air and I start getting real philosophical. It's what happens. You start to reanalyze the whole world and you look at the whole world from a new perspective. Now I'm not saying I'm enlightened because I lost my wife. What I'm saying is it put me on a different tier and I look at things differently, right? And I realized that certain things aren't really important and stupid things don't matter. The little stupid stuff doesn't matter. And if I'm ever lucky enough again uh, in the future to meet somebody, I'll have that different level of perspective because I won't allow stupid shit to get in the way, right? Well, it's the same thing with these scumbags. If you understand things from a new perspective, their power no longer can control you because it's false. It's an illusion of power. It's not real. The only thing that gives them power is your belief in it. It's like the only thing that gives the value any dollar is the fact that people believe the dollar has value. You do realize that, right? Any currency, gold, anything. If people were like, yeah, you know what? Gold ain't worth nothing. It's just a stupid metal, and nobody in the world cared about it anymore. Would it really be a currency? And people could argue that there's other uses for gold, and you could use it in electric. I'm just saying, as a currency, as a, a currency medium, it's an example. 
Paper dollar bills, even better example. Like I said, the only thing that gives your $10 bill value as a $10 bill is the fact that you believe that it's a $10 bill and that it has value as a $10 bill. If your belief in that stopped, poof, it wouldn't have any value. So if your belief in their false control paradigm went away, poof, they have no power. It's that simple. There's your solution. I figured I'd, I wouldn't make you wait till the end of the show because I'm going to get in a – I'll be covering a, a lot of this stuff more in detail. But I wanted to give you the solution right out the bat. Happy New Year. There's your solution. You. You're the solution. How about 2015? We, we really f- take things to a whole new level and we fix things. Instead of just bitching about it and pointing it out, how about more people realize their true potential? Don't be afraid. Trust me, I know. I understand fear. You think I'm, I'm like impervious to it? We're all humans. We all go through the same things. Just master your fear. You can control it. You just don't let it control you. And you don't focus on it. Have faith in yourself. Have faith that you're strong enough to handle certain things and to handle whatever life throws at you. Have faith in yourself that you're strong enough to overcome a bully because that's what this is. We have a bunch of bullies that want everything for them and, and their little clan and everybody else be damned and screw humanity. Humanity should be way the hell above where we're at right now, and we're not. Why is that? Why is it that we're nowhere near where our full true potential as humans should be? Why are we nowhere near it? Well, we can society, but it's so stupid. You're right. Society is stupid, but they've been dumbed down. To just blame society as a whole is very easy. Like I said on Hangar 18 with Melissa and Joe the other night, it'd be very easy for me to walk into Walmart and be like, I hate the world. You know, I, I'm done. I'm out. Because when you walk into Walmart 3 o'clock in the morning, you'll see sometimes how dumbed down society is. Or any of these places. Go to the mall, you know, 6 o'clock on, uh, you know, on a Wednesday night and just stand there with a cup of coffee for five minutes, people watching. It's very easy to say, I give up. Humanity is doomed. But it's not. It's been engineered to this level, which means we could turn the ship around and go where we're supposed to go. If we were steered in this direction, we still have a chance. You giving up and feeling powerless is part of their plan. You have no power. You can't change things. Bullshit, you can't change things. If there's one thing you've learned from this broadcast over the years, it's that you literally are the change. What is Marseille's legacy? You've heard me talk about it. Being that change, that means not giving in to fear. That means not believing what the bully tells you. You have no power. You're not capable of anything. He's telling you that it's psychological warfare. It's like when a bully's on the, you know, you're on, you go back to when you were a kid on the playground in school. A bully, you, his friends, and they're all, you ain't nothing. I'm going to kick your ass, you little weasel. Or they pick on you throughout the day before the bully drags you into a room or out in the side and they beat the crap out of you. They pick on you in the hallway. They screw with you. Psychological warfare, ladies and gentlemen. Even if the kid doesn't realize what he's doing, it's psychological warfare. Okay? Tribal. It goes back a very long time, psychological warfare. So it's, it's in our DNA now, the, the genetic memory, as it were. Things have been passed down. But we don't have to let that kind of stuff control us. See, the people at the very top of things understand how we work. So they manipulate us. Like an Xbox remote or a PlayStation 4 controller. 
We're not toys. And I certainly don't think any of you are worthless. I think you are all capable of so much more than any of you even believe about yourselves. That's why I do these broadcasts. Because I know my position, or at least part of it, not all of it, but part of my position in this world, is to be the person with the big mouth, because anybody that knows me in my real life knows that I have just a big of mouth in reality, as I do on air. Uh, I'm, this is the same way I am in, in real life. I get into arguments and debates. So this is, this is my role. This is what I'm supposed to do. And I'm doing it, and I know that it does change the world. So you need to go do the same thing. Right? Even Monster snoring in the background. She agrees with me. Right, Monster? That's right. I know why I'm here. Now you need to figure out why you're here and go do it. Does that mean you have to be a radio show host? No. Does it mean you have to be a blogger? No. You will figure out your niche to help save the world. But don't be fooled. When you start doing this and you start putting out positive energy and you start putting out that energy into the world to change it for a better place, you are helping to save the world. Don't think differently. Just so we're clear. You do have the power, ladies and gentlemen. Believe in yourselves, because I do. I know Merce did. I know all my friends here at TFR do. I believe in you wholeheartedly. We'll be right back. We are back, ladies and gentlemen. So, to educate you a little further on the subject of the division, because I want to get back to the divide part now. I've given you the solution. I've explained to you. Now I have to go back to this because unfortunately, even though I've given you the solution and we've gone over this, oh, I don't know, a thousand times at least on this broadcast, right? It doesn't matter. There are still people out there buying into it. So I need to do these broadcasts and get into the minutia a little bit to help educate the uneducated a little further. And tonight, I have the help of a legend. For the next 23 and a half minutes, you are going to hear a piece of audio that dates back to April 30th, 1978, to a radio legend who I am proud to bring back to the airwaves, and I have, uh, I am proud to say that I am partly responsible for getting her on a few different stations at different times and bringing her back because her work is just incredible. The late May Brussel will be joining DTRH tonight to talk about the King Alfred plan. You've heard me mention this before. You've heard me bring it up. You've heard me talk about the King Alfred plan and mention it when it comes to racism and stuff. I'm going to let May tell you about it. Back from 1978, April 30th, 1978, ladies and gentlemen. I was about two years old. And this lady was doing this back then. She was doing this back in the 60s. If you don't know who May is, she's an absolute legend. There's a link to her site on federaljack.com. Go check out the archives. Anyway, I want to play this so I can fit it in for you. This is May Brussel talking about the King Alfred plan. This week on Dialogue Conspiracy, I want to mention again the institution called the Arley Foundation, and then I want to read you some of the King Alfred plan because I'm afraid the Arley Foundation could be a conduit of what is the King Alfred plan. I define a King Alfred plan as a plan by the National Security Agency to eliminate all blacks in the United States of America, and I ask you to listen to what is written on documents that were allegedly taken from the National Security Agency and see if you think they can happen in the United States. In the meantime, as I mentioned before, uh, there are articles from February and March in Washington Post on the Arley Foundation. They describe themselves as a foundation for teaching and training, training films, teaching population control to disseminate abroad and at home. 
They pushed for money. Uh, Mr. Passman linked to uh, the Korean CIA and Reverend Moon and Nazi money that has been uh, being tied up to Moon and Passman and the Korean CIA goes back to the head of the Ali Foundation, also identified in the C- as CIA, Dr. Murdoch, head from George Washington University. Now, the Passman asked for money for the population work by Arley House. They got a $5 million grant that I mentioned before, and they said it has to be used, in quotes, for secret reasons outside of official channels. The proposal for the International Center for Population Dynamics is in Washington, D.C., and by February 1973, they had accumulated $15 million for their population budget Without many of the director's knowledge, they pushed some of this money to the Bahamas, which is now linked in the Bahamas. Dr. Jose Delgado, uh, the man who was working on the electrode implants for Navy intelligence and for the United States government, also had hospitals and funding in the Bahamas that were trying to make some of the connections to identify these locations. But this large bulk of money, so far admitted of $15 million, goes into a population control bureau which reminds me to bring up just at this time the possibility of the genocide program. When the book came out, The Man Who Cried I Am, in 1967, it's by John Williams. A lot of people, book reviewers, he thought at that time that it was possible that this book was true. I'm sorry, it was 1969. There's one book review that was in the Washington Post, And it says this about the uh, King Alfred plan and the book, The Man Who Cried I Am. These are quotes from a book review of that book. Hitler had a final solution for the Jews, and six million of them were murdered. America's final solution for the black man is the premise about which this book is written. You look at men who've been running the world for the last quarter of a century, and you find the book is not a novel but a statement of cold, hard fact, eminently plausible but more than likely true. The plot of the final solution is a horrible one, dreamed up and nurtured by men in Washington, eagerly followed by power holders in Europe, so that the century-long fiesta of extorting from people, grinding down humanity for profit, can keep on going in a business-as-usual world. We lie, we cheat, we murder, we overthrow governments, not to our liking, and with this kind of action going on abroad, What the hell are a few million spades or two at home? A murderer is one who murders. A murderer does not kill innocent people in some other land and then undergo a miraculous transformation at home, coming home to apple pie or mother. This is a book review saying there are murderers sitting high in seats of government. They are bland, napalm-making baby killers sitting around the councils of the tables, of our largest corporations, they are the worst killers of all. They kill not in anger, not even for revenge. Their murders are wholesale and coldly planned, carried out for profit, and they will kill anyone and anything that gets in the way. The two irreconcilable enemies are described in this book by Mr. John Williams as the blacks and whites, a tune of hate and prejudice orchestrated for profit, depending upon hate and prejudice. Each side is the unwitting patsy for the struggle of our time. Malcolm X was one of those who knew this about the King Alfred plan, and he was murdered. And Uncle Tom agents for the CIA or FBI, they all smell the same, are knitted together by their white cohorts until the final solution becomes evident to them. Now, this is the King Alfred plan, the sheet that is reprinted in the book, The Man Who Cried I Am, but I have a copy of it that was not photocopied from the book, that came from a person who has been doing a lot of investigative work and said it came and did come from the National Security Council. King Alfred, in the event of a widespread and continuing coordinated racial disturbance in the United States, the King Alfred will be directed by the President of the United States to be put into action immediately. And remember Jimmy Carter's racial purity statements, um, as a front and a possibility. Uh, this goes on. The agencies that we're, will participate are the National Security Council, the Central Intelligence Agency, the Federal Bureau of Investigation, the Department of Justice, the Department of Defense, and the Department of Interior. The participating agencies will be 
the National Guard, and the state police. The participating local agencies will be the city police and the county police. The uh, memo from the National Security Council says before 1954, even before 1954, when the Supreme Court of America declared it to be unconstitutional to separate educational and recreational facilities, there was racial unrest and discord that became a part of the American way of life. That i got to pause it for a second because I just want to point out the fact that she's showing how, even though some people say that this is a fictional thing, right, that in this plan they would use the police and the National Guard to round people up and put them in camps. Wait, you'll hear. It, it goes on further down. Uh, she starts talking about how they're going to – and I forget what they call them. Uh, but it, they, they wanted to like break the country up in the King Alfred plan into ten regions. Hmm. Where have I heard that before? Ten – oh, ten FEMA regions. Oh. Hmm. So could this plan, which back then she was talking about this plan that was – didn't know the King Alfred plan comes from like around the 60s, right? She was talking about it in the 70s. So you think maybe that a plan they had to deal with the black population at the time could be turned into something that they could use for the entire population? I just had Gwen on on Tuesday night, did I not? We talked about Native American issues and how welcome to the reservation, as Russell Means would say. Rest in peace, Russell. You think maybe this whole plan could be exported to the whole country? You think maybe what you see right now, the racial tension? You think perhaps that it could be, hmm, planned? Being done on purpose? No, no, no. That's a conspiracy theory. Anyway, back to May Brussels. Remember, April 30th, 1978, folks. Way of life was repugnant to most Americans. Since 1954, however, that unrest and discord have broken into widespread violence. The peace and stability of the nation are in dire jeopardy. The violence result, result in loss of life, limb, and property. It is costing the taxpayers mil- billions of dollars, and the end is not in sight. This violence has raised tremendously grave questions as to whether the races can live in peace with each other. Each passing month brings new intelligence that, in spite of new laws passed to alleviate the condition, the minority is still not satisfied. Demonstrations and rioting are part of the familiar scene. Troops have been called out in every city. Our image as a world leader is severely damaged. Our enemies press closer, possibly at a time during one of these outbreaks. The minority, meaning the blacks, have adopted an almost military posture to gain their objectives, which is not clear to most Americans. Therefore, when their objectives are denied, the minority, racial war must be considered inevitable. And when the emergency comes, we have to have total involvement of all 22 million members of the minority, men, women, women and children for this project, and it will be launched. And its goal is to terminate once and for all the minority threat to the whole of American society and the free world, uh, typed out chairman of the National Security Council. The end typed by the Secretary of Defense says that the survey shows that during a six-year period, the production has been birth rate created 9 million objects. Those are black children, or 1,500,000 each year. Production could not dispose of the containers. The parents, in other words, do not get rid of the children. Therefore, we have a bottleneck. However, that was almost 20 years ago. We suggest the vaporization technique be employed to overcome the production problems inherent in King Alfred. Now, one of the things that the King Alfred plan said when it came out in 1969 was that these people were an embarrassment to foreign policy. If you remember the memos of the FBI against Malcolm X and Martin Luther King, it was that they are embarrassing us overseas by exposing American racism. If you think that from... um, 10 to 40 percent of all blacks up to age 25 are unemployed or a newspaper account this week that after 10 years of housing and consideration of minority housing, it is difficult for blacks to get homes or apartments. The statistics were in the paper this week so that uh, there's no provision for housing for blacks. There's no provision for jobs and they're 
There's a lot of provision to turn them into dope addicts and drug addicts and get police on the streets so that it makes a situation uh, right for violence where you eliminate the leaders, you have no housing, you have no employment, they're forced to uh, break stores and ride on the streets, and then the King Alfred plan becomes the solution. Now, for the King Alfred plan, the United States is broken into a map of 10 areas. The capital region, which is Washington, um, two is the northeast region, the northern states, three is the southwest region, the South Carolina, North Carolina, and Florida. Fourth is the Great Lakes region. Five is the South Central region, Ohio and Illinois in that area. Seven is the Deep South region. Eight is the Great Plains and Rocky Mountains. Nine is the Southwest region, New Mexico and um, uh, down in the uh, Southern California area. Ten is the West Coast region, uh, the North area and the San Francisco, Northern California area. Hmm. The country being broken up into ten regions. Hmm. I'm sure this is just a fictional plan now and that this would never become a reality. Oh, wait a minute. What? We have ten female regions? What? I'm sure that's just a coincidence. I'm sure that a fictional plan for martial law in the United States that entails breaking the United States up into ten separate segments, regions, that mirrors a real plan. I'm sure that's just a coincidence. It's okay, America. Go back to sleep. Everyone's in control in Washington. Just do what they tell you, like Bill Hicks used to say. Go back to watching American Gladiators. Go back to sleep, America. The King Alfred plan says there will be no attempt made to seal off the Canadian Mexican border. Evidently, the Canadian and Mexican government works with our CIA enough that when we uh, go into the operation, we'll have their cooperation. They, we won't seal it because they won't be able to go north or south. The de- combined memo set out from the National Security Council says Department of Justice, FBI, and CIA. This is a combined memo for them. It said there are 12 major minority organizations that all are familiar to the 22 million. In other words, there are 12 groups in 1969 that were active and all the blacks knew they were. Dossiers have been compiled on the leaders of these organizations and they can be studied in Washington. The material contained many of the dossiers and we have the names of those who are a threat and we will reveal the material. The leaders who do not have such usable material in their dossiers have been approached to take government posts. It says the material contained in the dossiers of the leaders and our threat to reveal that material has held in check the activities of the leaders. That means that people like Martin Luther King can be blackmailed and put with women and taped and uh, tape record of their sexual uh, accomplishments or expertise or whatever it is they were doing. And I'm sure that this is one of the things that has blackmailed many of the black leaders is fixing them up with women on their political jaunts, and this was part of the plan. It said they, in the... I'm going to pause it for a second again. How many times have I said you do not have, or you have not had a real leader in the black community since Martin Luther King Jr. was killed? Jesse Jackson. How many times did Jesse Jackson get in trouble, scandals with women years ago? Go back and look it up. What did you just hear May say? Well, Popeye, she could have just said that. She said it in 1978, April 30th, 1978. Now, in between 1978, when she said this, and now, between April 30th, 1978, and now, January 1st, 2015, go look up and see how many women have accused Jesse Jackson of different things. Go look it up. How many... How many how many baby mama drama problems does Jesse Jackson have on the side? I'm sure that's just a coincidence, though. I'm not saying Jesse Jackson, by the way, is, well, they got something over on poor Jesse. He's a scumbag. He's an opportunist scumbag. Total piece of crap. Last person talking to Martin when he got shot in the face, and then he's well known for wiping Martin Luther King Jr.'s blood 
on his shirt. Like he touched him, got blood on his hand, and then wiped it on his shirt. Because then that draws attention to him. He's got he's got Martin's blood on him. Ugh. Jesse Jackson is a despicable human being, but you see how they can control people? What do you think Bohemian Grove is for? They get them into these bungalows with young boys or male prostitutes or whatever they're doing, each other, horses, sheep, whatever the hell else they do, right? And they, they get them in these bungalows, and they have cameras and mics in there. They record them, and then later on, they'll be like, hey, you're going to vote for this bill, and this congressman or senator is like, I'm not voting for that. I'm not backing that. And they go, oh, hold on. we got something you should see. And they open up a little digital video player, and there's the congressman with a sheep and a party hat on and a bottle of Don, right? And they say, oh, well, unless you want everybody to find this on YouTube by 5 o'clock this afternoon, you'll vote this way on the appropriation bill or whatever the hell they're trying to pass at the time, or you'll go this way with this committee, or you'll deny this. They do it to officials. It's not just politicians that go up there. Government officials, leaders of industry, they do the same thing. Maybe they go to a maybe they want a CEO to do something, get on board with something, and the CEO's like, I'm not gonna do that. They and then he's a he's a grover, he goes to the grove, doesn't even think about it, because he thinks he's got some level of power. And the next thing you know, there's videos of him and Dick Cheney and Henry Kissinger all dressed in drag, whipping each other. Right? Well, how the hell did that happen, by the way? Henry Kissinger looks like an Oompa Loompa now, okay? There was a picture of him on Drudge yesterday next to um, Obozo, and the two of them standing next to each other looked like the number 10. He is, he is just, he is so evil that it's just turning him into a huge ball of evil crap like his inner evil job of the hut is just coming out and i'm not making fun of heavy people or fat people but go look at henry kissinger he looks he's perfectly round with a head two little arms and two little legs now he's just this little little ball of evil this little fat pudgy ball of job of the hut looking evil that rolls around going we have a new world order somebody needs to bounce him like they did with the girl when she ate in in the original uh willy wonka the one that was dressed in blue, she eats the, the candy, and she turns into a big ball, and then the Oompa Loompas come out, and they bounce her away. They, they need to get the, uh, the, uh, the clockwork elves that smoke DMT, as Jones would say. They need to go get them. Alex needs to stop hanging out with the clockwork elves and let them go bounce Henry Kissinger away. Come on, Oompas. Go pick up Kissinger. Anyway, I'm sorry. I had to inject a little humor in there, ladies and gentlemen. So, back to May Brussel and the King Alfred plan. We... We'll have to finish the audio clip, obviously, on the other side. But I wanted to break it down and interrupt it and point this stuff out to you that, I mean, come on, really? The similarities of 10 FEMA regions and a supposed fictional plan about martial law, and they use racial division to kick off the martial law? And then this was all you know, during the 60s, during this time period of the lone gunman killing politicians, Kennedy... Both Kennedys, actually, Martin Luther King Jr., you know, you got Malcolm X being gunned down, supposedly. Uh, you know, they blame Farrakhan and his crew for that, right? Farrakhan takes credit for that. And if they did it, it was obviously controlled. They, they needed to kill Malcolm X for a reason, okay? They couldn't have him and Martin Luther King Jr. working together. Oh, that would have that would have actually propelled black people maybe to the next level, Right, that's why they were afraid of Martin Luther King. Actually, they weren't even afraid of him bringing black people up to the table. Like they, you know, the 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 rights and everything they gave them, you know, voting rights, all that. They were fine. It's when he brought up Vietnam and started telling people how, you know, being oppressed here at home is the same thing that we're doing to the people in Vietnam. Oh, that did not go over too well. And then we all know how that happened. I'm sure it was just though because he was. Let's let's bring up down to the lowest common denominator. It was just some pissed off country guy that was mad because he was a black guy shooting his mouth off. Right. Even though there was a, a civil um, court trial, what was it, back in 2000, I think, 99, 2000, somewhere around there. And uh, you can look this up. The King family, it was ruled that Martin Luther King Jr. was killed by a coalition of army, uh, special forces, and intelligence, the FBI, and the CIA. They killed Martin Luther King Jr. because he was a threat. Imagine if him and Bobby Kennedy had done a presidential ticket. It would have been unbeatable. Why do you think they killed Kennedy in the Ambassador Hotel? Ah, he was a flaming liberal. No, he was a flaming moron when his brother was the president. But after his brother got killed, Bobby became a changed man and realized what the game was. 
he realized what was going on and he was trying to get he was warned not to go in to be the president and run for president he was told they would kill him like they did his brother and he said i don't care i'm going to change the world and i'm going to get in i'm going to change the world and i'm going to investigate my brother's murder and you saw what they did they shot him even though the kill shot came from behind his his ear and Sirhan was in front of him. Wow. How, how is it that these bullets, you know, if, like, with, with the Kennedy family, they always have a magic bullet. Even though Sirhan's in front of him, the bullet somehow traveled behind him and got up to his ear. Behind him. That's the one that, that was the kill shot. Because he got shot in the arm. But everything came from behind him. Not in front. So. Magic bullets. Hmm. Must be a Kennedy family tradition. Because Oswald was behind Jack, and the kill shot came from the front. So man, when they kill the Kennedys, they must use curving tracing bullets. Like, we'll just fire in any direction. Pew! Oh, look at that some bitch turn. Woo! Pew! Really? And the bullet just happens to hit in the exact spot it needs to, even if the person's not firing in that direction. But hey, that's believable. I saw it in a movie once. <sighs> that was me face palming it, just in case you weren't sure of what that noise was. I get frustrated sometimes, ladies and gentlemen. Anyway, it's important to point this stuff out. That's why I'm taking the time to break this down and go over it. If I don't, and I don't discuss this, then, you know, we're, we're going to have an issue because it's just going to continue and we're going to have problems. And I don't want to continue and have problems. I know you don't. I know you don't want the world to be the same way it is. I know I don't. I want things fixed, so I have to take the time to play this stuff and break it down for you. I'm going to leave it paused, though, because we got a break sneaking up in about a minute and a half. So when we get back, I'll pick it up right where I left off, and I'll, I'll, you know, I'll give a little recap of where we were and what we were discussing about the King Alfred plan. There's only about 10 minutes left of the audio. Again, April 30th. 1978. So back then, May could see what was going on. May could see all the problems. And yet, this day, 2015 now, we still do the same things. We're not learning from our mistakes, ladies and gentlemen. Or as Kennedy would say, an error only becomes a mistake when you refuse to correct it. We need to correct this issue. We need to realize the problem, excise the tumor, heal the body, and move on. Plain and simple. And that's what we're doing tonight. Stay tuned. We'll get back into more with the King Alfred Plan and Nate Russell, legendary radio broadcaster. When we get back. Go check out the May Russell archives. There's a link over on federaljack.com on the sidebar. Click on it, we'll bring you over there. We'll be right back. Stay tuned. Ladies and gentlemen, we are back with our number two here on tonight's live edition of Down the Rabbit Hole. I am your host, Popeye, from federaljack.com. Make sure you check my website out, by the way, if you want to hear all my older shows. All my stuff that I've done on Truth Frequency is in the Truth Frequency Radio Archive. So you should go get a subscription. It's really cheap. You can listen to all my stuff in high quality, plus every other awesome host that's on there. So... Yeah, you should do that. But I also did radio for years before I was on TFR. So if you want to hear everything, and I mean everything I've ever done, special broadcasts, podcasts, whatever, radio shows, being on other people's radio shows as a guest, guest hosting other people's shows, go over to federaljack.com forward slash Popeye. You can just go to Federal Jack itself. There's different ways to hear it. But if you want to download them, the free download page. It's very simple, old school directory listing style page because it works with every piece of tech out there. Sometimes the lowest tech way of doing things, the simplest answer is the best. So go to federaljack.com forward slash Popeye, federaljack.com forward slash Popeye. Download way. Three and a half years, almost four years. It'll be, wow, it'll be four years in, in April. Wow, this April's four years I've been doing radio. Wow, how how time has flown. 
So yeah, f- almost four years worth of shows, over three and a half years worth of broadcasts in there. Podcasts, special reports, everything. There's hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of MP3s in there. Download and listen away. Put them on your phone, put them on your tablet, put them on a MP3 player, USB, plug them into your car while you're driving. That's the whole point of me putting it out there for free so you guys can download it and listen at your convenience. Not at my convenience, at yours. That's the point of the download page. That's why it's free. You can go and go, oh, I want to listen to Popeye's show from two and a half years ago. Interesting. Sounds like an interesting topic. Whoop. Download it right to your phone, right to your tablet, whatever. Download, if you have everything, if you have a big enough drive, get like a, I think if you get a 64 giger, it should possibly fit every, oh, I don't know. It might be bigger than that now. I haven't checked the archives in a while, the size. Uh, if you get like, a, I don't know if they make the anything bigger than a 64K thumb drive. If they do, just get a big, big one and then download everything. That'll give you enough room. Because there's at least, I know, like 50 or, last time I checked it was like 40 or 50 gig, but that was like probably eight or nine months ago. So yeah, I would definitely get something huge and just download everything. That way you have it. And it's archived for you. And if anything ever happens, at least there's multiple different copies of the archive out there. Now, when I used to sell the hard drives loaded with information, I used to, uh, I still do if someone picks one up. I, you know, I put everything I have downloaded on it, but I also put all of my archives on there for free. I always throw it on there just because. In the, I put the high quality ones. I have 64K versions and then I have 128K, like high quality versions, and that's the ones I throw on there for free. Anyway, federaljack.com forward slash Popeye. So, hour one, I was giving you solutions to this whole agenda, the whole problem, how we can just fix things and move on, right? I know it sounds simple. I mean, all the, the smaller things are all semantical, and a lot of that stuff won't even mean anything. It goes away. Poof. But at the end of hour one, I was playing audio for a May Brussel and the King Alfred plan, showing you the similarities, 10 FEMA regions, 10 regions in the King Alfred plan. They want to use race riots to bring in martial law around the whole country. Of course, blame it on, quote-unquote, in the, the, the plan from the 60s, blame it on black people. There was a lot of racial tension back then. But where are the similarities to today? Well, besides everything I just said, how about the faux racial tension that you see being pushed now? And you see black and white people having more tension between them now because of the media and the politicians and the race baiters like Al Sharpton, Jesse Jackson, and others. Al Sharpton's a big one. Now, When we went to break, I was playing the, we were at the section, I was playing the audio, uh, we were at the section where May was talking about how they, they're gonna, in the document, they're, the, the document itself that she had gotten, the King Alfred plan documents and stuff, it talked about how they, the powers that shouldn't be, that's who they are when I say they, right, the powers that shouldn't be were going to use women whatever, different ways of blackmail and control to keep people under their thumb, to keep certain black leaders under their thumb. Keep them from doing what they're supposed to do. And then again, I bring up Al Sharpton. I mean, this guy, there's so much dirt on this guy out there, and yet he has his own show on MSNBC. You know, They act like he's a journalist, even though he's being a journalist and an activist at the same time. And there's, there's a conflict of interest when you're reporting as a journalist on a story that you're a part of. That's a conflict of interest. You're no longer being a, a, you know, looking at it from an objective standpoint and just reporting on the story. You're in the story. So, I mean, you can call yourself a journalist, but you, re- you have to admit that you're an activist at that time. You know, I mean, we have a lot of activists slash journalists in the alternative media, but they understand when the difference between the two. They also understand guerrilla journalism and things like that. What he's doing is not guerrilla anything. He's got bazillions of dollars from MSNBC. Why would they do that? Because Al is controlled. Come on. I mean, even a monkey could see this. You know, a half-blind, retarded monkey with a diaper sucking its thumb could understand what's going on. This guy, Al Sharpton, is nothing more than a racist, crap-stirring, 
control asset. And he's racist by some of the things. The fact that he he equates everything to racism. Well, that's because you don't like black people. Um, That's kind of racist if you think about it. Like you're equating everything, like everything anybody does. It's because they hate black people. So what you're saying is black people are so oppressed that they're a special they're, – they're, they're, they're a special community and they deserve special rights that other people in the community, other humans, their fellow brothers and sisters, don't. What is that? That's division, ladies and gentlemen. It's the same thing they do when it comes to gay rights or they, they – anything. They break you up again. Sexual preference, political preference, color. We're all human. Can we all agree on the basics that we're all one race? There is no black race, white race, Latino race, okay? There's black culture, Latino culture, Asian culture, American culture, Mexican culture, Canadian culture, but there's one race. You understand me? There's only one race. The human race. We are not going to get off this planet and into the stars in any real way. What you see going on now is just the powers that shouldn't be creating a secret space program. Whole different broadcast. You think I'm crazy? You should go look it up. They launch bazillion dollar planes into the air and then they lose them? Really? Oh, we don't know where where that that bazillion dollar stealth shuttle went. (coughs) Bullshit. I mean, NASA should be called Nazi. Really? Werner von Braun? You should go do your history. We need to grow up and get into the stars. and we, we haven't even explored our own planet. We don't know anything about our own oceans. But we can't do any of that. We can't, we, we, we can't get to that level because right now we're still arguing over whose Tonka toy is whose in the sandbox. Or whose, whose section of the sandbox is better. Or who's black, or who's white, or whose version of God is better? How many different ways can the human race be divided? Let me count the ways. And it's people like Al Sharpton and these other controlled assets that help do this stuff. When we went to break, May was talking about this. She was talking how, like I said, they use, they, they build dossiers on people and they use things, whatever they can, to control people. And that's what she was talking about. And I'm going to pick it up right there. So I can play the rest of it and then pick apart the rest of the King Alfred plan and then finish up on the other side on that second segment of the second hour here. So here we go with the rest of May Brussel and the King Alfred plan. And again, remember, April 30th, 1978, folks. This woman was well ahead of her time. That people like Martin Luther King can be blackmailed and put with women and taped and uh, tape record of their sexual uh, accomplishments or expertise or whatever it is they were doing. And I'm sure that this is one of the things that has blackmailed many of the black leaders is fixing them up with women on their political jaunts. And this was part of the plan. It said they in the dossiers, we will threaten to reveal material. And that threat, because of their activities, has held many of them in check. But those people, those leaders that don't have usable material to blackmail them sexually or otherwise in their dossiers, we've approached them to take government posts. This is such as Andy Young, I suppose, and his ilk, mostly as ambassadors and primarily in African countries. The promise of these positions also has materially contributed to a temporary slowdown of minority activity. I think of Stokely Carmichael and many of the black leaders, Eldridge Cleaver, and uh, so many of them have been neutralized. You could do a list of neutralized black leaders. But the plan was either to keep in the dossier material that silences or give them government posts to slow them down. We do not expect these slowdowns to be of a long duration, duration, however, because there are always new and dissonant elements which appear to join the organization with the potential power to replace those leaders that have either been sent out in the field to be representing us or to be blackmailed. All organizations and their leaders have to be under constant 24-hour surveillance. You see people like Fred Hampton in Chicago, the Black Panthers, or uh, many of these leaders that could not be blackmailed or sent as ambassadors are then murdered by the FBI just in cold blood. 
Now, the organizations listed in 1969 were 12 of them when the King Alfred Plan was written. And when I read them to you, you can see that they're totally neutralized and taken over and non-effectual now, so the system is working. First was a black Muslim, and of course the energy went out when Malcolm X was killed. Second was the Student Nonviolent Coordinating Committee, SNCC, which is completely emasculated. The Congress of Racial Equality, CORE, which we never hear about. The Yeruha Movement, which is neutralized totally. The Group on Advanced Leadership, which we'd never hear about. The Freedom Now Party. The United Black Nationalists of America. The New Pan-American Movement. The Southern Christian Leadership Conference. There we have Reverend Abernathy and Reverend Jackson just going around, never exposing who killed Martin Luther King, totally neutralized or blackmailed or zombies, you know, accepting the death of Martin Luther King's mother and um, his brother, you know, the the drowning right after he was killed, all kept quiet by these people for some reason or other, and I'm sure it's a combination of blackmail and threat. The National Association for the Advancement of Colored People and the Committee on Racial and Religious Progress. I went to a dinner party here for the NAACP, oh, it was about six months ago on the Monterey Peninsula, and the black people there are totally neutralized. The guest speaker that evening was the Judge Goodwin from Fresno who lets people out if they uh, believe in Christ. He lets their sentences down. He's on a uh, Christ trip, and he's neutralized as a black leader. He's almost ridiculous. He now wants to run for governor under the party of God. The whole NACP thing is um, a joke. It's a place to have dinner and get together. And all 12 of these organizations have been totally neutralized and fingered. The uh, King Alfred Plan says, note, at the appropriate time to be designated by the President of the United States when the leaders of these organizations are to be detained, put them in only when it is clear that they cannot prevent our emergency, working with local public officials during the first critical hours. Use them at the appropriate time, the leaders of these organizations. They are to be detained only when it is clear that they can't prevent it. If they think that they could help or work along or soothe the people, such as the Jews in the concentration camps, leave them out, but bring them in when they begin to catch on. All the other leaders that you can't use to slow down the hysteria before the vaporization takes place are to be detained at once. In other words, if they won't go along with you, uh, gas them. Otherwise, use the leaders to calm the people. Compiled lists of minority leaders have already been put into the National Data Computer Center, it is necessary to use their minority leaders that will be designated by the president in the same manner in which minority members who are agents with the central and federal agencies. And we cannot, until there is no alternative, reveal the King Alfred plan in all its aspects. That's identical to the Holocaust. If you read the books on Germany or saw the four-part series at NBC, Use them as much as you can. Use them like you use the blacks, uh, FBI, and CIA agents. Don't reveal all at once any more than those people did, the Jews who directed the other Jews into the concentration camps. Minority members of Congress will be unseated at once. Now, this came out in 1969, but remember that Richard Nixon's enemy list and every single member of black, black member of the Congress was on that list and fingered for some reason not... Uh, that they were active or uh, even real spokesmen against Richard Nixon, but they were fingered as the enemy list, and goodness knows what other list. Every single member of minority of Congress will be unseated at once. This move is not without precedent in American history. The preliminary memo for the Department of Defense, it said this memo is being submitted in lieu of a full report for the Joint Chiefs of Staff. That report is in preparation. There will be many cities where the minority will be able to put up a street fight, a superior number of people, a desperate and dangerous will. He will be a formidable enemy in a few cities, for he is bound to be because of his heritage, and he knows that political asylum is not available anywhere else. The greatest concentration of minority will be the deep south, the eastern seaboard, the Great Lakes, and the west coast. So when they get anxious and get out on the streets, bring in the army, the armed forces to halt them. We'll be outnumbered for a while, it says, when the national population exceeds that of the minority by more than 10 times, we have to realistically take into account, one, 
40 for 50% of the white population for various reasons will not engage to defend the black people when it comes to the armed forces are spread around the world now. There will be a breakout here so that they need troops at home. Hmm. Troops spread out around the world weakens, weakens things. They need more troops for homeland defense that militarized police. And at least, according to the plan back then, 50% of the white population wouldn't help the black people for various reasons. Why? Because of the divisions. If they didn't see them as blacks... If they saw them as fellow human beings and not, oh, they're just black people, then maybe more than 50%. And remember, this is according to their plan, so their numbers could be skewered. I mean, they could throw whatever numbers they want, right? But at least according to their their analysis, 50% of the white population at the time, let's say that was true. Let's say that was true, that 50% wouldn't have stood up. It's kind of like that, um, that, uh, <clears throat> that poem. Oh, first they came for the communists. I didn't say anything because I wasn't a communist. Then they came for uh, trade la- the trade the trade labor unions, and I didn't do anything because I wasn't a member of a union. Then they came for you know the political dissidents, and I wasn't a political dissident. I, you know, I'm misquoting it. There was a few things, you know, a couple different ones in there. And then they came for the Jews, and you know, I didn't say anything because I wasn't a Jew. Then they came for me, and there was nobody to say anything to stop them, you know, in my defense. Duh! What do you think you're doing? She just laid it out for you. 1978. 50%, if that's true, 50% of the white people in this country wouldn't do anything if they started rounding up black folk. Oh, because you think they would stop with the black community? Really? Really? It's time to put all these divisions aside. Really. It's 2015, ladies and gentlemen. Think about that for a second. It's 2015, and we still have to have this conversation. Why? Think about why. It's not natural. We were beyond this. We were beyond this. It's all how the media portrays things. It's all how the powers that shouldn't be want things to be twisted because they need the narrative to be spun. They need the reality to be a certain way. They need you to think a certain way. And in order to create that reality, they program you the way they want. And then you, as a biological walking computer, walk around and actually live that reality, which creates it. That's what's going on, ladies and gentlemen. And if you can see through it, then we can get through it much faster. Back to May. To handle the emergency. Three, the local law enforcement officials have to contain that emergency until help arrives, till the troops come home to have a superior force. The New York police, for example, has 25,000 man police force, and there's one million minority members in the city. So you have to handle one million minority with 25,000. Now that gets back to, again, the Zodiac taunting you, the police can't get me, ha ha, you need more police. Evelyn Younger and Ed Davis running for governor and increasing those police departments in California and New York City, increasing the police departments. They have to get enough police to handle the minority when they begin to round them up. The King Alfred plan uh, which you can get, incidentally, in the library, in the book by John Williams. You can check it out from the library. Uh, it's called uh, The Man Who Cried I Am. And on pages 375, 373, I'm reading from the King Alfred plan in the book. But as I say, I do have a copy of the original that didn't come from the book, but you can get a copy in the book. And after John Williams wrote that book, I'm Malcolm X and the King Alfred plan, he became a non-entity. You never hear the name John Williams. He isn't on the talk shows. You don't see him uh, kicking around and making a, a spectacle like Sammy Davis Jr. or Ben Vereen or some of these happy blacks who are making it in the system or even Richard Pryor who kicks ass in the system but is still very much a part of it. John Williams is never heard from and probably because he exposed this plan. It goes on to say that local police... Uh, will take over first for the minority and head off the emergency. There's a, a 10 point program before the vaporization begins. Countdown is this. One, the local police take over the emergency. Countdown to eight hours. Give the local police eight hours from the moment the president declares the national emergency and brings in the uh, guards and the local police. The third step in the seventh hour is the local police 
uh, and the county police join together. Not only the local, but the county comes in. The fourth step is that the state police and join the county and then the local forces, the armed forces that are available. The fifth step is the federal... I'm going to pause it right there for a second, ladies and gentlemen, because I want to point out the fact that she's talking about what you see going on right now, what happened in Ferguson. This is an important point. What did you see going on in Ferguson? What happened? You saw militarized police dressed like the army, like they were in downtown Baghdad, walking around, shooting tear gas. I mean, you, it kind of looked a little, a little dystopic, right? But how did that get ramped up? You saw the National Guard come in. You saw state police there. You saw county sheriffs there. You saw local police there. That's what she just said. She And I think it's interesting that the time frame that she was discussing, I haven't actually, you know, there's really not too many plans. I mean, Rex 84 and all that stuff. Uh, but there's not too many recent plans that have been released that people can at least get their hands on and release to the general public uh, in regards to, you know, real, like, like documented evidence that it's real martial law plans, not something that somebody typed up on their computer or Photoshop to, to scare the crap out of people. But it would be interesting to look at them and see if there's this time frame thing where, you know, this again, 1978, and according to this plan, you have, uh, a, at least according to the, the, the King Alfred plan, the, whether or not you believe it's fictional or not, you have the local police have eight hours, and then after that, they start to, ramp it up state police you know county if it goes local like city or town county state national guard and now because back then they were only using the national guard the idea of you know we they still actually you know thought about posse comitatus right so they had the national guard to handle things now we have in 2015 an active duty army unit of i think it's Something like, I want to say 20,000. I think it's like 20,000 strong or something. I could be wrong. The number could be a little bit higher. But it's something something upwards of that. I can't even remember the name of the unit right now off the top of my head. But it's um, it's like the Homeland Brigade unit. Uh, it's in, it's, if I remember correctly, it's in like the northern – it's stationed up in the northern – uh, central portion of the states, but it's like the Homeland Brigade unit. Basically, if there's martial law or insurrection, you have active duty, not reservists, not National Guard. I'm talking active duty soldiers that their job was to go and kill, hunt, and you know, hunter killers in Iraq. And now you have these guys that, oh, they're gonna the same. These same units are now gonna be trained. To, to help quell any, any civil disturbance. Read that to mean that if there's a riot, they're going, you're going to see Ferguson on a bigger scale. So you see how the plans, you see how May's plans, or not May's, but in May's show about the King Alfred plan, the plans of the supposed fictional King Alfred plan, which I would, prob- I would argue that there's enough similarities that it's probably not really fictional. So the, the similarities between this plan, the King Alfred plan, and real martial law plans that you see today are clearly evident, folks. I mean, it's, it's blatantly obvious what's going on, okay? At, at this point, it should be obvious to a blind person as to what's going on. You don't need to see physically to understand the game being played. And they're doing this because if they can, if they can bring about a revolution, they, they can, you know, like for whatever reason, civil war, they can bring in their police state much quicker. They need that. Don't fall for it. We'll be right back. We are back, ladies and gentlemen. Final segment of tonight's live first 2015 edition of DTRH. That's right, January first, 2015, the first official 2015 edition. Of down the rabbit hole. I have two audio clips that I'm going to play for you. Okay, I'm going to finish up the May Brussel thing, and as soon as I finish up May, I have uh, something else. So hopefully I'll have time to get to the, the second one, but I want to finish up May. And it, it's important that I 
I focus on this. It really is. It's important that you see and hear the truth. I don't need to go over what's going on in the news. Plenty of other radio shows do that. I need to point out the glaringly obvious problem of our separation from ourselves and each other. If we can overcome this, we can beat them. We win. You understand? Papa, I'm just one person. What can I do? Think outside the box. That's what you can do. If you step up outside of that box, you'll be all right. I'll get into that more in a second. Let me finish with May. She's got about two minutes left. I rewound it so you could hear as I was talking when I paused it about the different stages of them bringing in the police. It's only about two and a half more minutes of it. Just listen. Police uh, will take over first for the minority and head off the emergency. There's a, a 10 point program before the vaporization begins. Countdown is this one, the local police take over the emergency. Countdown to eight hours. Give the local police eight hours from the moment the president declares a national emergency and brings in the uh, guards and the local police. The third step in the seventh hour is the local police uh, and the county police join together. Not only the local, but the county comes in. The fourth step is that the state police and join the county and then the local forces, the armed forces that are available. The fifth step is the federal marshals join the state and the county and the local forces. The next step is the national guards who are fe federalized or held in readiness to come in on these riots. And the next step is then that the regular armed forces are alerted to take up their position. The next step is that all minority leaders, national and local, are detained all over the country. The next step is that the president addresses all minority and black on radio and television, and he gives them one hour to end the emergency. This is a 10-hour countdown of how it's to proceed. And then 10, all units under regional commands go into emergency O. And emergency O is, the, the according to the committee report, it shows that during this six-year period, as I read before, the production of the blacks created 9 million objects, 1,500,000 a year. That was back a few years ago. The production couldn't be disposed of, which is a bottleneck, and this has been going on for 20 years that they've been increasing in numbers. Therefore, we suggest, because of this emergency, that vaporization techniques be employed to overcome the production problem inherent in the King Alfred plan by the Secretary of Defense. And John Williams wrote, yes, those leaders clearly left themselves vulnerable, vulnerable for the hunters who for a generation or more sought communists with such abandonance that they skillfully obscured the growth and the power of fascism. The black skins had stirred the fascists. And while these men were hunting the communists, the plan for the fascist takeover was happening. There you go, ladies and gentlemen. Again, April 30th, 1978, May, Brussel. This woman was well ahead of her time. She was out there before William Cooper, Jones, any of us. She's a legend. Do I think she's perfect? No. But her insight was amazing. Remember, she didn't have the internet to do this, ladies and gentlemen. May used the card catalog at the local library. She would go through the newspaper and read the articles, and she could see through the crap so that when she would read an article, she'd be able to dissect it and see that it, you know, she could break it down. She used to do it on air all the time. 25 years this lady did radio. Most people don't even know that. 25 years. If you go over to federaljack.com, there's a link on the side. You click it, it'll, it, it says, it's a big blue one, it says May Brussel Archives. Blue and pink, I believe, is what they did the, the banner pick in. And I left it up there in those colors because it sticks out. Click on it, 
go to the site. You can order her archives. It's actually pretty cheap. 25 years of MP3s. For researchers, it's a must. If you consider yourself to be a real researcher, you need to get May's work. It'll blow your mind. In-depth analysis of martial law, things like this. Bobby Kennedy's assassination, Martin Luther King's assassination, John Kennedy's assassination, Malcolm X's assassination, and others. John Lennon's assassination, the CIA, satanic cults in the U.S. Army. That's, I think, what got her killed because that was right around the time that she suddenly got a fast-acting a form of cancer in the 80s and died when she was talking about all the satanic cults and uh, all the mind control you know, a la Kathy O'Brien and all that stuff. She mentioned, you know, the Church of Set and all that. Or was it the was it the Temple of Set and the Church of Satan? I can't remember. There's so many offshoots of these weird occult groups. Sometimes it's hard to keep track. Anyway, Aquino, all those people. They were. It was all mentioned. She talks about all of this stuff, and she went. I mean, she was going into detail, and then suddenly she got this fast-acting form of cancer, and died. Well, she was. She was in her sixties, Popeye. Mm-hmm. Sure, because there's there's never any, been any evidence or proof presented to you people that there's weaponized cancer at all anywhere, right? Ever? Yeah, that's what I thought. So, what do we do, ladies and gentlemen? How do we beat this? I told you. We have to think outside the box. You have to step up and realize that the game is being played. You have to know what's going on. Like G.I. Joe used to say, knowing is half the battle. Right? At the end of every episode, they'd always have the kids like, you know, doing something stupid and the G.I. Joe guy would come over and tell them not to lie or whatever. And they'd say, and they'd say, and now we know. And he'd go, and knowing is half the battle. G.I. Joe. Remember? Well, knowing is half the battle. Like Sun Tzu said, in the art of war. To really understand these people, you need to read that book, by the way, or understand how to fight these people on a, you know, on an info, on an info war plane. I hate that word. Ugh. You know, on a on a plane of we, I mean, Hillary Clinton did admit she said we are fighting an information war and we're losing. A couple years back, they are. They really are losing the info war, but they are losing it because of you. They're not losing it because of me or Joe or Kev Baker or Chris and Sheree Geo. I mean, we're a part of it, or Mel and Aaron. We're all a part of it, but ladies and gentlemen, you are the true driving force. It's not just a few people. You, all the beautiful souls out there with infinite potential, you're the ones that are going to save the world. I'm just the guy that's going to light the fire under your ass to do it. You're the ones that are the heroes. That's how we beat this. You have to realize your true potential. And that starts with learning to love yourself. How many times have I said self-affirmation? You have to look at yourself in the mirror. You have to go and spend five, ten minutes a day. Go look at yourself in the mirror. Look at yourself in the eyes. And make sure you tell yourself you are of value and you are of worth. If no one else in your life tells you, make sure you tell yourself. Remind yourself how much you're loved. Remind yourself how good of a person you are. And you know what? Over a very short course of time, you won't even need to do that every day because you'll, be, you'll just realize it. You'll actually believe in it. Once you're right with yourself, then you can go out and you can fix the world. They know that. That's why they got you not right with yourself. That's why they, they the powers that shouldn't be, through their media, politicians, mouthpieces, they get everybody to think in confusing circles. They don't, they don't understand things. They, they might have a political belief, but then their, their morals are getting in the way. And then, uh, and, and then maybe their sexual belief or their sexual preferences are getting in the way because it, it's, 
you know, butting up against their political beliefs and then everybody's confused and they don't know where to go and, oh my God, the, the world is a scary place because of ISIS and Ebola and terrorism and Al-Qaeda and, and the 9-11 and the monster is always running around in the background because, you know, 9-11's out there. It's still eating people. It's anthropomorphized into a monster and we have to go hunt down and kill it. I mean, think about it every time. Well, why do we need more security? Because 9-11... What is 9-11 some sort of monster with big teeth that's hiding out in the woods waiting to eat us? Ooh. It's always some level of fear, some level of separation. They get everybody confused. They get you separated from yourself, your true inner being, your true potential. They get you completely disconnected from that. They unplug you. They turn you off. So now you don't have any base. You don't even have, again, it's like, Picture standing on a roadway, and there's, you're, you're looking at the roadway, and you can see everything, the, the lines in the road, the curbs, the houses, the telephone poles, and all of a sudden, poof, it's gone. It's just, you can see maybe two feet in front of you of the road, and then it's all gone. It's all just white everywhere you look, 360 degrees. Because your base, the basics have been removed from you, and you're so confused, you don't know what to do. Now you feel lost and scared. In comes... The powers that shouldn't be on their little white horse. We'll save you. Get on the back of my horse. We'll save you from this chaos. This is my horse. Order. Hop on. We'll ride off into the sunset together. I love you. I promise I only hit you because I love you. Off we ride on the horse. Save us. Yay. Easy, simple analogy. That's what they're doing. Except they're not really on a white horse. If you look really close, it's just painted on. The horse is actually black with red eyes, and it's got fire breathing out of its mouth. Or you could look at it as the other way, you know. I saw a rider. He was on a pale horse, and the rider was deaf, and hell followed with him. I'm paraphrasing a bit. You get my point. Maybe it is a... A white horse. Never shouldn't always trust the guy on the white horse. <laughs> Just remember, death comes riding on a pale horse. Like like the title of Bill Cooper's book, Behold a Pale Horse. Uh Cooper was a wise man. Very, very, very wise man. Wise beyond his years. Many tried to copy him and tried to emulate him. All failures. Just be yourselves, guys. Don't try to copy somebody. Anyway. Back to self-affirmation and loving oneself and fighting this thing. You, you can't really go out and love somebody else or love the rest of the world unless you learn to love yourself first. I speak from experience. There was a long time where I did not like myself. I hated every aspect about myself. There were things I hated about me. I would beat myself up over it. I would pick on myself. That's why I have such tough skin. You can ask my friends. Like, they bust my balls. Like, I'm usually the recipient of a lot of ball busting. Doesn't, you know why? Because it doesn't phase me. I have pretty thick skin because nobody, nobody, nobody could tear me apart the way I know how to tear myself apart. And it's the same way for all of you. And they know that. People that run things know that. They know that we are literally our own worst enemies in many ways, shapes, and forms. So they manipulate us to continue this habit into, into imprisoning ourselves. Our belief is what imprisons us. Not our belief in spirituality or anything like that. Our belief in their false paradigm of power is what keeps us under their thumb. They are bullies. They are nothing more than bullies with suits that have their hands on the levers of power. And they have idiots that are willing to do whatever they tell them to do. Because they think that it's honorable because they've been trained to do that. Well, you know, just remember, the Nuremberg trials did prove that just following orders wasn't a really good enough answer to get you out of trouble in the future. So I'm sure many of those guys that were just following Hitler's orders 
during the, the Nazi reign of power, I'm sure that they didn't think that they were going to have to atone for their crimes. Plenty of them did. Some of them, it took over 20 minutes to die while they were hanging. Go look up what happened to them. Just following orders is unacceptable. If you're a cop and you beat the crap out of people, and you tase people for your own pleasure or because you're part of a gang and you're just following orders, you're subhuman. You're acting like a subhuman. And that's why the people, powers that shouldn't be, they look at you even lower than they look at the rest of the citizens. They call the citizens, Mark Passio and I have talked about this, they talk the citizenry, the basic citizenry, they call us the walking dead. Because everybody's actually disconnected from their true inner self, their true power, as I'm trying to explain here tonight. They call the average everyday person the walking dead. I'm not kidding. This is what they call us. Do you know what they call you, police and military? I speak former experience, military, working for these scumbags myself. Do you know what they called us? Do you know what they call you still while you serve them? They're pets. They like to call the cops and stuff their dogs. They refer to you as their pets because you do what they tell them to do like a very good trained dog. You're attack dogs. You're nothing more than attack dogs. Think of how you handle a canine. Do you really look at that? I mean, many people look at the canine and go, well, that's a canine cop. He's one of the family. But do you really have that? that, is that? Is that like a public persona that you put on? Do you really feel that way about the dog? Or to a certain extent, are you like, it's just a stupid canine. I can tell it to do whatever I do. And it does it. Hmm. They have the same way of thinking about you. You're just a stupid pet, a stupid animal. What did Kissinger say? That little roly-poly job at a hut twin. What did he say? Military men are just pawns. They're stupid animals, pawns to be used. Go look it up. The, the actual exact quote's much longer. Kissinger is a scumbag, and he was in, he was in the army. Although he was an officer and really didn't do much but still this is the guy that served as an officer in the army for a period of time and he's telling you military men and women are dumb stupid animals to be used so next time you're punching grandma in the face tough guy think about that as you're beating some 60 year old woman's face in because you're upholding the law Think about that. The people's anger at the police is very justified. The problem is it's been manipulated because people started to realize that there was a police brutality problem and a police brutality epidemic, and it was on the news for about two or three days, and what happened? It quickly got changed to it's white racist police officers that don't like black people. So now the argument went from everybody having a police brutality problem to, oh, it's only the blacks. Now you, And then that brings out people that are like, well, you know, they rioted, so I can understand that the cops needed the gear. Some of these very same people are people that six months before would have been saying, Obama made the police state. So when you fear that equipment being used on you, it's tyrannical. But when you see it being used on another section of society that you're uh, like a subsection, I don't want to say that, you know, I'm not, I'm not trying to imply that black people are lower class. What I'm saying is if you broke up society as a whole into different subsections, white, Latino, via different cultures, right, and you're not in that culture, you might not care. We should care because that's our fellow brothers and sisters, our fellow humans. But we don't because we've been trained through all these divisions over the years to not care, to look past it, be like, eh, screw them. That's just black people. Or if it's black people, ah, that's just white people. Or Latinos, ah, screw them, that's just black people and white people, it's not us Latinos, or it's just Asians or whoever. Every race has been taught to feel that that race is superior to every other race on this planet. I see, I even said the word race. Every culture, I have to, again, it's about re, reusing the proper terminology and getting rid of the, the word magic. These different cultures, 
they all think that they're they, they believe in the concept of racism that their their culture in their eyes race is better than another race culture on the planet the only place i have not seen this like as i mean you're going to see it in every culture you know there'll be a, a a reflective piece of this like someone in the culture might reflect these thoughts but as a whole, one of the only cultures I have seen that does not reflect this type of behavior and thinking are the natives of this country. And they have a reason to really hate. And yeah, they might not trust white people, but they have a pretty good reason not to trust white Europeans, don't you think? It's not so much as they're like, we are superior to you, blah, blah. And maybe some of them might say that. I think it's more about, oh, I don't know, being put on reservations, giving smallpox laden blankets, things like that. Maybe you should go listen to the show I did with Gwen on Tuesday. We have to stop fighting each other. This is so stupid. This is absolutely stupid. I mean, th doesn't anybody want to just take a step back and look at this for a second with a little bit of logic and turn off the emotional valve for a minute? This is dumb. And I don't care if somebody out there doesn't like black people or Latinos or white people or whatever. Whatever culture you're from, if you don't like someone else's culture, grow up. You can probably learn more than you could even imagine from that culture if you just sit down and understand that you're all humans and that you could interact and share so much knowledge and love and light. That's what we're meant for. We're not meant to grow up and stab and kill and shoot each other. Really. Think about it for a second. It, all you religious folk out there, no matter what denomination you are, Christian, Muslim, Jew, Buddhist, doesn't matter. Do you really think your God, your, or your version of God, for lack of a better term, I use the word God as like an all-encompassing umbrella term, but your version of God, do you think even your, your individual version, all of you, you really think your God would create life, this magnificent, beautiful creation, planet Earth, this intricate creation, intelligent design, bugs, the ecosystem, plants, animals, reptiles, fish, us. Do you think all this would be designed just so this entity, God, could go, now kill each other! What kind of sadist asshole god do you have? That's not my god. That's some programming that's been put into your head. Think about it. We've all been programmed in one way or another. To be separate. Do you really think that that, the creator, whatever it is, that created this amazing planet and all the life that resides on it. Do you really think all of this would have been made just so humans could come in and stab and kill each other and saw each other's heads off and shoot each other and develop new ways to blow each other up more efficiently? Do you really, really think, do you really, really think that this is what we're meant for? And if people don't believe in, in anything at all, we're just sacks of meat or whatever, and I'm, I'm not picking on anybody if your belief is deeper than that, that's cool. I'm just saying, if say you just don't believe in any spiritual thing, do you really still think that we are here to just fight and kill? Well, no, but, you know, that's just inevitable. No, it's not inevitable. We can stop this. You can stop this. More importantly, you. The people tuned in right now, you're going to be the ones that save the world. Don't look to anybody at Truth Frequency Radio or any other alternative media outlet as some sort of savior. Oh, Papa, you do radio. You're so great. Yeah, I'm a great guy. That's great. I do radio. I hope I inspire you. That's the point of it. I hope I educate you. That's the point of it. But I'm not Superman. I am not going to save the world single-handedly. As much as I would do it, if I had superpowers, if I could, you know, if I could trade my life to to spare Earth from any more of this crap, I'd give it up tomorrow. But that's not a reality. 
What is a reality is all of you realizing your true full potential as human beings and rising up above base level consciousness. That's what 666 means, by the way. The mark of the beast. We're the beast. Because we're in beast mode. Very primitive level thinking. You get it? So let's rise up out of base level thinking. Let's all look to ourselves and realize that we have the true power. How does that sound, ladies and gentlemen? Sound like a plan? I think we can do it. This is Sparta! Stand up. You realize your true power and your true potential. And that's how we beat this game. It's that simple. Ladies and gentlemen, we're out of time. As I always tell you, the solutions to our problems are an inside job. I love you all, and I'll catch you all again Tuesday. I'm out.